Here's an idea. You have access to a working time machine. And you can use it right now. But how, you ask? Well, I'll tell you. But first this. In a book once, an author shared an anecdote stating that the people in old age homes with the greatest fear of death were those whose religious or spiritual views included an afterlife. Now, if I had to hazard a guess, I'd say this might have something to do with the sudden realization that there might not be an afterlife as promised. And they're then confronted with having to revisit the choices they've made under the assumption that they had another life yet to be lived. Now, that's a scary realization. And I can't say one way or the other if there's an afterlife, because how would I know? What I do know is, so far, there is neither tangible nor reproducible evidence of any such afterlife. So the most informed decision that you can make is to proceed with your life choices as though there isn't one. Now, I'm not saying you should live as though your actions don't have consequences. What I mean is, you shouldn't wait to see if you get a second chance. You cannot save up your life or your dreams with any certainty that you can live them later or in another life. To put it the way Alexis Hanyan would put it, lives remaining, zero. Viewers note, if anybody writes YOLO in the comments, I'm going to kill them to make sure that they're right. So how does this relate to time machines again? Well, I'll tell you. Let's say the one life we have looks like this. And without a flux capacitor, you can't affect the past or the future, right? Well, it depends on how you look at it. There's a method called projecting. And when I get stressed, say I get a flat tire, I use this method to de-stress. I imagine what me a year from now would say thinking back about the situation. Maybe something like, yeah, you got a flat tire, you got a tow, you got the tire fixed, it cost you a couple of bucks. What do you think getting angry or stressed about it is going to solve right now? Then I generally calm down. I acknowledge that I can't unflatten the tire, but I can deal with the situation with the calm demeanor of future me. Additionally, the better you can imagine projecting yourself to that place, the more effectively you can use this strategy. So say you want to write a book, but instead, right now, you're watching reruns of TV or playing video games. Maybe because it's easier, it's more fulfilling in the short term. Now imagine you're talking to you five years from now or 20 years from now. What would future you tell you to do with the 100 hours you just spent watching Duck Dynasty or playing Modern Warfare 6? Really ask future you the question. Well, a future you would answer that you'll never use the skills from Modern Warfare 6 and you'll never remember the ninth season of Duck Dynasty and that they didn't help you grow. And future you wishes so badly that you would have started writing that book. Just started writing that book. And if you take that advice, and start writing that book today. Well, then future you is affecting the past and present you is affecting the future. And that means that you can affect your future's past and you can affect your future right now. And that is the power of a time machine. Someone once said, we are all time travelers navigating the future at the constant speed of one second per second. So what are you doing with this second and this second and that one that just passed? Thanks for watching.